what are the opportunity pockets you see uh, for startup founders to build startups? You know, I'm an investor. I am not at this point an entrepreneur. And so you're an investor scientist. Uh, you write, I don't know about scientists. You write part, papers like of, this. Kind of uh, I'm an investor marketeer at some level. Uh, so the forecasts really come from, you know, conversations with some of the exceptional founders and researchers in our ecosystem. So you, I'm synthesizing. You talk to researchers. We talk to lots of researchers. We talk to lots of researchers. Look, I've, I, I, we I talk to professors at Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, MIT, uh, Harvard, Cornell Tech, yeah. Columbia, all the time. Because uh, you know they are at the cutting edge of the technology. They are. Yeah. We talk to researchers at Microsoft, we talk to researchers at NVIDIA, or we talk to some of the entrepreneurs that are taking the tires from the models. So our knowledge is a synthesis of what we are seeing. And, and obviously we make judgment calls, you know, yeah. when you synthesize, inherent in that synthesis is judgment. Yeah. Uh, but let me take a step back. When I, yeah. To answer your question, you know, the way I think about this is we are still early in the AI era. Okay. Uh, the last couple of years have been about LLMs and LLMs have scaled dramatically. So much investment yeah. going in. It. So yeah. much, there's been a lot of investment and a lot of success. Yes. You know, when you look at what ChatGPT or Claude can do today versus what similar products could do three years ago, yeah. it's night and day. Yeah. At the same time, it's not clear that the future is a linear extension of the past. Mm -hmm. These models will not scale in the same way. Mm -hmm. And, and there are multiple reasons for that, whether it's cost of compute or access to data or others. And so we will see new model architectures. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a company, Ikigai, mm -hmm. uh, that's a spin out of from MIT, mm -hmm. which is a very different model architecture. It's a, it's a graph based architecture versus a transformer based architecture. And specifically for structured data, yeah. it is able to, it's much more computationally efficient. Yeah. than an LLM. So you can train it yeah. with a fraction of the cost. You can fine tune it with a fraction of the cost. Yeah. And it's an opinionated architecture that works for structured data. Yeah. Uh, so that's one example. Mm -hmm. But there are many, many other examples of new model architectures that are emerging. Yeah. Like the world view model. Like world view model and others. And so what you'll see in the future is one, you'll see a plethora of models uh, and model architectures. You know, you will see applications that are compound AI systems. Mm -hmm. And again, this is the term that the Blair Lab at Berkeley really popularizes is Matei's lab, where they said, look, value is shifting from just model development of innovating in the model to innovating how you stitch these models together. Mm. Because you combine models with reasoning, with data pipelines to build what are called compound systems. You know, the buzzword these days is agentic systems. Agentic systems, systems. systems. correct, correct. And these compound AI systems will allow you to do things that an individual model could never do. Mm. So we're seeing a lot of innovation there. I think we're seeing large organizations who have proprietary data sets yeah. bring their proprietary data sets to bear mm. in the form of fine tuning or custom model training. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some examples, but I think you know that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Uh, I think there are many more transition, uh, you know, opportunities ahead. In terms of the opportunity for startup, you know, we're at a unique time in the history of technology. Mm -hmm. I think every incumbent in every single industry yeah. is at risk. Yeah. You know, I would not want to be a com company com with a billion dollars in software revenue sitting around right now. Be complacent. I think all of those companies are at risk. Yeah. But it's not just software companies. I think all companies are at who, risk. So think who about- Who are not AI first. They're at yeah, risk. But by definition, most companies are not, are AI, not AI first. first. And so all of those companies are going to have to figure out how do I still use the advantages that I have, yeah. but make the transition into an AI native world over the next yeah. five, seven years. So can you say that um, AI first tr transformation, like digital transformation used to be, is going to be an industry in itself, transforming incumbents into AI first? I think it already is. It's already it is. McKinsey, BCG, Accenture. You know, the consulting firms are the, at the bleeding edge of all of this. Yeah. I remember in, in the mid 90s, McKinsey made a lot of money helping people think about the internet. Yeah. In the last two, three years, all of the consulting firms have made a lot of money helping people think about the AI revolution.